Okay. So good news. I undid the frame and the, this is the result. It's, uh, it looks like it works. Um, so I did also do the same to a lesser extent with this corner on this board. Um, but yeah, it, it, it looks as though we had, we have a viable method for sort of um, repairing damaged boards there, which uh, is really quite nice. Um, so we're, we're in a position, I think, to continue this process and sort of work on getting these boards to be, you know, as good as possible uh, before we actually uh, put leather on them and so on. Um, in the meantime, this text block has finished curing. So now this is in a very, uh, uh, very kind of, if we can hold it like this, there we go, very robust shape. So this is sort of patiently waiting over here. Um, I did have a peek in my grab bag of leather. And I think with this one, what we're gonna do is go for a nice black leather. Um, this has the advantage of um, actually having some, it's a decent size, um, put it this way around. Um, so I'm not gonna have to worry too much either about, excuse me, either about the height of it, which was a concern with the previous restoration I did, or its breadth. I think it's gonna sort of wrap around quite sort of generously here with a bit of spare there, which is helpful because that combined with the second piece of leather will give us enough to be able to create four strips that will give us the four corners um, for the boards. Um, I've also ordered some uh, um, some nice uh, marbled paper and some nice poten potentially uh, useful uh, internal paper that we could use for a paste down and fly uh, from Hollander. So that's on its way as well. Um, but in the meantime, we just need to continue uh, sort of prepping uh, uh, these boards for attachment. So as we sort of look, I mean, this was clearly in terrible condition and we sort of improved that. These other corners aren't great. And this internal sort of against the spine, this edge is also really quite degraded. Um, we've got, we can see the actual buried sort of twine in here. Um, now, because we're using that black leather, we've actually got enough room to be able to remove a strip of this leather, get rid of this twine, and actually build out, sort of stabilize, and just sort of build out this edge a little bit. Um, and also maybe just do some repairs here. So let's do that first. So, what I'm going to do first off is I'm going to remove a leather strip to expose those ties. So I'm just going to draw my knife gently across here to remove this leather. I'm using really little force. I only want to cut through the leather, nothing else. And it'll all come off very freely anyway because it's so degraded. There we go. Now sort of Per the previous video I did in this playlist, I want to try and keep as much of this leather on as possible because I think that will reduce um, subsequent wrinkling when we actually cover this ultimately with um, marble paper. There we go. So you can see these holes and ties. They're sort of going up here and actually through. So that, that kind of tells me... Let's just see. Do I need to maybe remove a little bit more? I'm just going to... See that's... Um, let's just... 
up and then we moved in half. Now that's interesting. A little bit of an experiment here. Let me just see if I can pull on this near the other pieces, because it could actually be internal in the board. I was expecting it to be buried there and actually visible through, but it doesn't look as though it is, which is an interesting finding. Yeah, that's interesting. That says to me, this was actually done in an interesting way. It actually makes me think that what we're dealing with here are two balls that were stuck together. And the reason I say that is, maybe the easiest way to demonstrate this is if I sort of excavate this tie here, and I can sort of show them at the point I'm trying to make here. As I pull this through, it comes through that hole. Okay, that makes sense. But then where does it disappear here? It goes in again, has no apparent exit here. This leather feels extremely smooth. So I think this, this is quite a thick board. I think the rope's actually buried between two layers inside which is an interesting, I've never actually seen that before. Yeah, it's potentially quite a, quite a good way to do it. But as I pull it, it comes out. I'm not feeling any dent or any place where it was under here. So, anyway. It also probably means I'm not sure how useful. The problem I do have here is this one was actually uh, broken. So what I'm probably gonna do, I think, is I'm gonna remove these ties. There we go. Yeah, that's just lost inside the, between the layers. That's what that is. quite a touch of high quality that the fact you asked there she buried the um, buried the twine inside because that's not something I do I always sort of have it coming out of here and then rely on sort of paste downs to sort of and fabric to cover what I'm doing whereas they actually did it with between two boards which is it's a nice touch um, beyond my skill set unfortunately I don't know how to create boards from scratch um, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to rebuild that. Um, I don't want to have the holes going this far um, into the board. I'm probably going to focus on maybe recycling one of these holes here, which, which would be these here. So I'll use these as basically one of three. So when I do the triplets, they'll be like this. So I'll only be drilling two extra holes. Now we do have seven ties, so I'll actually have to do a triplet here and here as well. Um, but eventually we'll end up with a nice sort of solid board here with seven sets of three holes. And I'm gonna build out this corner as well. We'll be using this method. Okay. Okay, so I've been going through the process of building out these boards and what I did was on the corners um, I've reinforced with more of this papier mache and then just folded over some binder scraps like this and it just makes for a nice corner such that when these actually dry out there'll be some rigidity there. On this back strip where I removed that strip of leather um, I wanted to maintain the holes that the previous bookbinder had made. So that's what these pegs are here. I'm gonna 
create two new holes and obviously there'll, there'll be holes in triplicate but you know for now I'm just uh, sort of packing this edge with papier-mâché putting a binder sort of strip of paper over it like that but keeping those uh, sort of holes open I just put a great big blob of papier-mâché in there by accident so I'm just kind of um, finishing up here um, doing it with this corner here. It's just a matter of uh, doing it like so. Always put, put more than you need. And then the excess will just sort of squeeze out. There's actually a bit of a, this edge at some point has taken a bash. So I may as well just Reinforce that as well. Like so. yeah, at the end of the day, doing this now sort of avoids the sort of help avoid you know the sort of distortions and wrinkles that we might get on um, paper covers when we finally put them on. And then what we do here is just grab a bit of. Smush of glue on here, like that. Cut it in two. Like so. See, it sort of squeezes up there. So you've got an excess here, which is great. That's going to give you a bit of pressure and structure against the paper. So if we're going to put this one here, it'll be a little bit too big, which is perfect, because then we can just squeeze out the excess until we get exactly like that. So, okay, sorry about that. That's uh, more of a, this is not an episode of Dr. Pimple Popper. This is a bookbinding video. Just use this little strip of paper here. Just to finish this little job here, again, it's just, I mean, obviously the uh, papier-mâché itself is glue-based, but this just creates a little bit of extra structure so that when it's all covered, it'll all be good. Okay, that's Basically, it. so these boards are now going to be set to dry. And this is going to take a couple of days for everything to really dry out and go hard. And in, in the meantime, we'll be waiting for the uh, paper to arrive from Hollanders anyway. So there we go. I think that's set for now. So here we go. These are set. I'm going to leave them to dry. Our text box ready to go. It's in good shape. We've got the leather. So now we've got all the components other than the uh, decorative paper and uh, we'll be ready to move ahead. The next step uh, I will do is up, if this dries before the decorative paper arrives is uh, I will drill the holes and attach the boards. Um, Okay, so I would like these boards set quite nicely. Now they're properly rectangular again. And I did go ahead and drill the holes that will eventually take the twine. The other thing I did was uh, um, prepare the leather. So, you know, the destination it's going to be a scenario where the boards will be like this and we have this nice piece of leather here it's going to wrap around 
Now we've got really prominent bands, so those are going to show through really nicely. So that'll be quite nice. Um, I also went in ahead and prepared the um, corners. So, as I've mentioned before, there, there's a sort of a little mathematical formula to doing it. In simple terms, the distance here coming in needs to be equivalent to the width of this rectangle. And you want the length to be twice the width plus the thickness of the board, which with these boards is actually quite significant. It's a quarter inch. So these particular pieces of leather are all one and three quarter inch width by three and three quarter inch length. So I had a bit of a kind of revelation or statement of the obvious, um, which is while these boards are detached, it actually makes a lot of sense to put the corners on immediately. Um, that way you're not having to sort of fight the bindings which are here at these holes uh, as you actually put the corners in place. And I think why that's going to be helpful here is these corners are composed of basically papier-mâché and paper and glue. So they're extremely moisture sensitive. And I'm going to have very limited time when I actually put the corners on um, to work before these corners start to soften again. And obviously that would result in a very sort of sticky disaster very quickly. So what I think I'm going to do, um, and sort of having these boards separated sort of will help with this, is um, the first thing I'm going to do is wet this leather, soak it, so that'll in reduce its um, resistance as I try to fold it like this. Then I'm going to squeeze out as much water as I can while making sure they're still damp. Then I'm actually going to put glue on the inner surface. So I won't be putting glue directly on here, I'll be putting the glue here and making sure that's properly covered. Then what I'm going to try and do is actually create the shape of the corner in my hands, like so, as close as I can get it. Push it down over the board. Obviously I'll have limited time at this point, the clock will be ticking because I don't want everything underneath starting to soften. And then, and this will all be done within a sec few seconds, put a couple of shims across and clamp the whole thing in place. And if I do that relatively swiftly, within a few seconds, I should be in a situation where the corner is held in place, but by the same token, the, cor the um, underlying structure of how I've rebuilt the board isn't starting to soften yet. So that's the plan. Let's see if it works. So I'm just going to work the glue into the fibres of the sort of first side of the leather. Like so. Now, 
The bulldog clips I have aren't big enough to actually cope with two shins, as well as the thickness of the board and the leather, so I'm actually just using a bit of card here. Okay. So there we go. We'll let these set in place. And then I think the next step is gonna to be to um, actually um, do the board attachment to the text block. Uh, and then we'll be able to put the leather on and at that point then we'll be waiting for the um, decorative paper to arrive. Okay, so um, these corners came out pretty good. Um, some slight indentations from where I had the bulldog clips on, they'll fade. A um, bit of a gap there, which I'm probably gonna I'll fill with some blackened uh, papier-mâché at some point. Um, but either way, it's all in good shape, which given the state of these corners originally is a bit of a turnaround for these boards. Um, boards are attached. If you want to see how I thread these boards with this sort of twine into the holes, check out the um, 1586 playlist of uh, uh, Alfreccia del Divino Amore, um, which goes through that in detail. And shortly I'll, I'll be sort of gluing this up. So we're in a position to um, prepare the spine for leather attachment. So what I've done is my usual thing. I've prepared these um, sort of half sort of cone shaped cardboard forms. And they're gonna sit like so with these tongues sort of going between the um, raised bands here. So let's get these attached. Just out of the way there. This will go on like so. And I'll just let gravity give me a helping hand by turning the book upside down here. Continue on the other side. Too much glue on there. Well, that'll be covered in glue shortly. Um, also, just going to put some glue on this surface here because these are going to have the other tongues attached. And the rule I always mention is. No glue on the fabric, only on the boards. 
or to attach the cardboard to itself. Like so. And then just to make sure that the cardboard sits as low as possible, I get a pin and just push it directly into the text block like so. a bit of absorbent paper on top of this and some weight. Let it dry and it'll be ready to receive the leather spot. So I went ahead last night and um, put on the uh, leather. So that's looking uh, very nice actually. That black leather turned out quite well. Uh, if you want to watch videos on um, doing a leather backing like this, probably the best one is um, this playlist, which is 1586 uh, Ferretra del Divino Amore as being one. Um, another might actually be uh, the playlist for uh, A Church History of Great Britain, um, uh, 1655, where I put this piece of leather on. Um, there probably isn't a great deal more we can do with the book itself uh, until such time as the um, paper arrives from Hollanders, or seen nice marble paper to go here, some nice decorative paper to go inside. Um, I have given some thoughts to labelling though. Um, with this previous restoration, I was able to sort of recycle a leather, uh, a label that sort of worked out quite well here. Um, the beauty of black is it's a shade, not a colour, which means it gives you a bit more licence in terms of choosing whatever colour you want to put here. So what I was wondering was, you know, could I, for example, have in this compartment, or maybe this one, sort of Abraham Cowley's works, 1674, and then maybe at the bottom, another label that goes Baronet Nugent's copy, something like that. So that's, that's kind of what I'm thinking I'm probably going to experiment with. Um, sort of stamping and labelling is something that, uh, again, I covered in reasonable detail in the Church History of Great Britain playlist. So I, I basically did this uh, as a sort of first experiment. So um, I'm probably going to um, attempt to do something similar. Um, I had, you know, sort of in, inspired by the this red label, I, thought, I sort of had been thinking, you know, could I use this scrap of leather here to fashion two red labels here, but it's just a little violet, the colour. I think it's a little too much of a contrast. This, this red has sort of a, quite a lot of sort of scarlety pink in it, and I, I, I just don't think that quite, I think it's a little too excessive. Um, I'm getting very conservative in my old age. Um, so I suspect what I'm probably going to stick with is probably using a, a sort of a more of a, a muted tone, maybe this. It's still dark enough that it'll show the gilt uh, um, quite well uh, when we apply the it's the uh, uh, gilting. But I think that's probably what I'll end up doing. Um, but we'll see. Um, if it doesn't work, we we'll just don't stick it on, you know, so uh, we'll, we'll see how that sort of uh, plays out here. But anyway, here we go, um, waiting for the paper to arrive. 